Welcome back, everyone. It is Monday, August 12th, and the MLB, our three best bets are on the way. Just Austin from calling our chat today, but I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. And we certainly ended the weekend strong with a little 2-0 and day on Sunday baseball. Let's talk about our winners. We had the easy one, which was A's and J's over eight. I mean, shout out Chris Bassett. Wonderful work. Six runs in the first inning. We will take that. And then we wrapped up the card with a Guardians money line victory. Looked easy. It was there up 5-1 to one going to the eighth. Had to sweat a bases loaded jam and needed to get out of it in the ninth. And we did just that, a 2-0 and day. Let's try to build on some momentum. Hopefully it's a great week. we got some good picks coming up in a moment. Uh, no breakdown today. Typically we are doing a breakdown where, you know, we break through break down every single MLB game. Typically I have videos posted before this one. Since I'm still traveling, I actually have a flight in a few hours at in 5 a.m. Going to wait to post this video. But, you know, we got a flight. So I will be doing those starting up tomorrow. So get amped up for that. We're going to dive in the picks in one moment. But can you do me one favor? Go down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We got NFL on the way soon. I've been enjoying watching some preseason games, but enough about some football. Let's dive into the picks today. We're going to start with our first one. And this is a tad juice, but I'll talk about why. Pablo Lopez, under two and a half earned runs, minus 140 on DraftKings. Now, if I'm going to be honest, it is 3 a.m. when I'm recording this. I was trying hard to find a way to add something to a Pablo Lopez because I don't honestly like taking minus 140 plays. Because you never know where the line's going to move. Maybe it gets better and you guys can get better odds by the time I post the video. Maybe you get worse odds. There were a couple legs I looked at trying to reduce some juice. Here they are. Number one would be Andrew Abbott of the Reds to go one plus walks. I'm pretty confident he does that almost every single start. And it's the Cardinals. They'll walk a little bit. Then I looked at Sonny Gray. Same game to allow three plus hits. And then an alt team total. I do like the Yankees to score at least three runs. I don't know if they cover because they are minus two and a half today. But... I do like them to score some runs. That Bush guy is pretty bad. And even if Bush goes out there and pitches a gem, the White Sox bullpen is always looming. So if you wanted to maybe throw in Yankees to score three, that'd probably be my most confident, you know, add here if you wanted to reduce the juice here on Pablo Lopez. But obviously, I'm just going to lay the minus 140. I didn't love taking, you know, Yankees at two and a half. You can if you want to. I, I think they easily get that done. But I, if I'm going to lose, I want it to be on Pablo Lopez, not on the Yankees not showing up on the road in the first road game in a hot minute. Now, let's talk about Pablo Lopez. And why am I taking this under here as he's pitching up against the uh, the Kansas City Royals at home today? Now, I, if you look at Lopez on the season, 4.74 ERA and a 1.15 whip, he's actually been one of the most unlucky pitchers in baseball. I'm sure you can say, hey, it's unlucky. Maybe you're just not pitching well. But he does have a 3.5 expected ERA, which is 70th percentile. I mean, 3.5 expected compared to his actual 4.74. Not great, but 65th percentile and expected a batting average. I think he can pitch well here. Now, obviously, he's going to have a tough task here against the Royals, but there are some good things to go our way. Number one, Pablo is only allowed seven home runs at home compared to 14 on the road. The worst thing case scenario is when, you know, he's pitching a gem and he gives up two base runners and then you just know a home run's coming. Well, at least he's been limiting those at home. And despite some, you know, unlucky, you know, some unluckiness for Pablo, he's still under this line in four of his last five starts. So we love to see some good uh, momentum. His first start of the year was seven innings pitch, one earned run allowed to the Royals. Obviously, you don't do much with that. Uh, March slash April start doesn't honestly mean a ton for me. But Pablo is coming off a four-earned run outing out in Wrigley Field against the Cubs. We've actually seen him bounce back pretty good recently over the last few months. And the last four times he had went over, gave up three, four, five, six, seven runs, whatever it may be. He bounced back the next next start going two, zero, two, and one earned run. I mean, no pitcher wants to go out there and, and absolutely sell the game for his team. It's kind of what he did last start. I anticipate he pitches well. Now, obviously, it can be scary to fade the Royals. But I'm not going to lie. The Royals at home, I'm not fading that team. That team's... Low-key cheating at home, if we're being honest. But if they came out in the next year or two, hey, Royals, we're, we're banging trash cans at home. I wouldn't call them shocked because the Royals, you look at them, third best in runs scored per game at home, on the road, 10th fewest. And I bet you that would be much lower than 10th fewest if they hadn't just faced the White Sox and poured on runs in that bullpen or faced the Tigers, a team that they've owned. I mean, people have tweeted out statistics. The Royals against non-White Sox and Tigers teams – they're below 500. They haven't been good. And so I think Pablo can come out here and pitch well. I think there's a reason the Twins are like minus 165 on the money line, despite, you know, Brady Singer and his much lower ERA than Pablo Lopez. And so my favorite pick of the day, they're just going to back Pablo Lopez. Give me his under two and a half earned runs. He could give up five and they could be unearned. I'll, I'll take that. But I really think he pitches well here today. I also like that Pablo is not a very efficient pitcher. So we're not like, he's not like a Framber Valdez or like Logan Webb where, 
They could go six scoreless, and they're only at 60 pitches, and they're going to keep rolling out there. I don't want that. I'd rather Pablo Lopez go be inefficient, have some 10 pitch at bats, hopefully end with an out, and hopefully he can do his thing. The Royals don't strike out a ton, so if they want to run up his pitch count, go for it. We're just taking Pablo Lopez under two and a half earned runs. Now, let's dive into Logan's pick. Logan, obviously, normally would be here. He had an early, well, late flight last night. He's actually just landing right around now. So I just figured I would record, but he did give me a pick just like he did, well, a few days ago. This pick, though, today, we're running it back with the Guardians on the money line. We're taking them at plus 100 on DraftKings. Um, we really like the Guardians. Again, we took them yesterday. They came through. Didn't have a huge offensive day. I mean, five runs scored, but they got the timely hits, and that's what you needed. As Logan talked about yesterday, that's what the Guardians do all season long. They, when they're good and they're at their best, they're getting the timely hits. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's Stephen Kwan or it's Brian Rocchio batting in the ninth spot. They get those timely hits, which is what you need to win baseball games. And you look at who they got going on the mound. I like Ben Lively. Look, Ben Lively, 3.59 ERA and a 1.17 whip. Mostly Lively does is he gives you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Now, his last start didn't pitch well, but it was against the Diamondbacks. The Diamondbacks have literally been scorched earth against everyone. He went out there. Five innings pitch, four earned runs. But he's typically a guy that's going five to six. He's normally gets pulled somewhere in there. He's giving you two earned runs. I mean, this guy, he's steady. He's not going to go out there and probably shut out the Cubs today. But I think he can pitch decently well and give us a shot. Lively has also had a lot of tough matchups. And we're talking about his last four. Padres, Phillies, Orioles, and Diamondbacks. I mean, that's a gauntlet of offenses to face. Sure, the Phillies, you could say, eh, you never know. But still, a very tough. And he went and played in Citizens Bank Park, where the Phillies appear to be only good in at home here. And he's pitched decently in those starts besides that D-back start. Now I'll face the Cubs offense, which let me know if you know what you're getting from the Cubs. Because some games you get the best offense ever. Some games you get absolute trash. And they're that their numbers sport at 15th in average, 11th in OPS, 13th in WRC Plus versus righties the last two weeks. So just the middle of the pack offense, you never know what you're getting. On the season, Cubs 28th in batting average with runners in scoring position. Lively's going to give up some hits here. Not a big home run guy. I mean, he's given up some home, like a home run or so in his last few starts. But look, if he can limit the Cubs to, hey, get a double and hit it with the runners in scoring position, I'll live with it. I think that he pitches decently and gives us a chance. But we also need some runs up on Shota Imanaga. Obviously, Shota is the reason that the Cubs are slight favorites here. But still, at the same time, Shota, he's been hittable this season. And you look at his numbers, a three ERA and a one whip. Cleveland, they've actually been a little bit better against lefties recently. Their batting average might not show up, but they face some tough lefties in here. We're talking guys like Tariq Skubal, who are, are I mean, if you're facing Tariq Skubal, sorry, I don't expect your averages to be uh, too well. But, look, they're going to face Shota here, and I feel like when Shota is working, he's getting those strikeouts. But we know Cleveland, not a team that strikes out and good at getting the timely hits over the full season. The Guardians, sixth best in batting average with runners in scoring position, fourth best over the last 14 days. We've talked about Shota. He's good first two times through the order. Third time, the wheels seem to fall off. So even if Shota's pitching a gem, he's like five innings, he's cooked the first two times, that sixth time, be careful. Shota, we talked about his first two times through the order. 174, 208, third time, talking 350. Whatever teams are seeing, once they make that adjustment, they are hitting him pretty well. And I think the Guardians will be able to capitalize on that and put the ball in play. Shota's giving up like a... 290 batting average and balls in play. We know the Guardians don't strike out a whole lot. I think they'll be able to do their job. When you get to the bullpens, Cubs are first in the ERA last 30 days. Guardians are third. Honestly, not a huge difference. I don't see the Cubs bullpen, honestly, as being first in the ERA. But hey, they pitched well recently, so tip your cap to them. But we really do like the Guardians. We should not see Class A tonight, the guy that tried to sell us the normal Guardians closer. But they have plenty of pitchers in there to do their job. So we're not like the Guardians getting them as plus 100, returning back home, coming off of two games that they won against the Twins. Obviously, riding with some momentum. Let's hope that they can uh, continue that against the Cubs team that, to be honest, don't, I'm not, I'll fade the Cubs any day of the week. Sure, Shoda's, Shoda's our GOAT, but the Cubs never give him run support. Every single time you back Shoda, no run support is coming your way. So hopefully that's the case today. And maybe that the Guardians give up some runs on Shoda, two or three, get to the bullpen. Hope we got a chance there, and I think we we will have a chance at home. We got to back the Guardians. Hopefully they win plus one hundred. And then our third and final play of the day should be no surprise. It will be our parlay of the day, which is back. It will be posted later when I land around nine a.m. I will go up and write it and whatnot and send it to Odds Checker. So maybe a little bit later it will be posted than normal. But we have no early games, so you have plenty of time to lock it in. Did lose a few in a row last week. It was just because we picked you know the both to score one and kept getting a couple of teams that just went scoreless. That's going to happen, but the odds of teams going scoreless through five, 
not too often, especially against some trash pitchers. But hey, we you don't swing the bats for them. But we'll have another parlay similar to that posted, like I said, down below in the pinned comment and the description. So definitely check that out when it is live. Probably won't be live until uh, I will say maybe 10 15, 10 30 a.m. Eastern time. So let's have a good day. Recap you can see at the bottom of the screen. I got my Pablo Lopez under two and a half earned runs. A little juicy, but minus 140. We'll take that. That's a winner. Guardians ML plus 100. Then our parlay of the day will be live, like I said, later on this morning, probably around, like I said, 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern time. So you guys have a wonderful Monday, a wonderful start to your week. Let's hopefully take a 2-0 and day and build that into a 3-0 and day today. Start to build on some momentum and really get back to the positives and really make an August a huge month and carry that over into September. So appreciate you guys for the love and support. Like I said, I'm finally back in the normal home studio, although not really a big studio because I don't have anything up in my background. But either way, y'all have a wonderful Monday, and I will see you guys back tomorrow with Logan and maybe with the flags out. We'll see, but we'll see you guys then. It's Austin signing out. Peace.